Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the stage that probably most people are stuck on. It's either gonna be this one or it's going to be stage six in Soul Cross. These two stages are really, really awful in rotation three. I mentioned this when I previewed the current rotation that these two would be a main blocker. S8 mainly because it blocks the entirety of this deeper Soul Cross. You can see I've managed to get quite far into it now that I got through S8, but S8 was so far the hardest stage that I have approached. Now, what I want to do in this video is just kind of explain how I prioritized and built my champions to beat this stage in hopes that if you're stuck on it, maybe you can do it. I don't have Alsgore. I don't have Alaz, the new guy. If you have one of those two, this becomes much easier. You can see like this guy's got a six star Alaz, pretty much one shot it, not a problem. Um, and most people who have an Alaz are doing it very quickly, very comfortably. I was able to do it in about 121 turns, which wasn't bad, but that was after several hours of attempt in it. It wasn't very nice. It wasn't a good experience. If you have Alsgo, this is much easier. It is significantly easier. He probably replaces the role of someone like um, Baroth or someone like um, Rian, to be honest. Um, if you don't have Alsgore, you don't have Alaz, and you don't have Spider, I don't know if you can do this. If I'm being honest, I hate being the burden of bad news. You might be able to do it with like quadruple Sentinel stun set or something of that nature, but I think it's going to be very difficult. Uh, Spider's just really good. The main reason why we like Spider here is we get an AoE decreased defense that doesn't attack, which is great for wave two because it has a Mortimer Macabre. So that's the advantage of having Spider. We get an AoE decreased defense and then we're using Rian the Condra to put Weaken out. So we get that good setup. We have two damage dealers in Baroth the Blood Soaked and Sentinel. And then Mordecai is giving us just an increased attack and kind of being a bit of a utility. Also, the Axie Aura is probably really helpful. There's nothing else that's really good here. You can see it's pretty much the only aura apart from in the Condra, so he's just providing a bit of support. I did try Krakath, I was considering it. Uh, she's quite good for this ability for strength and, and shield. Uh, it's not bad, it increases the value of all shields. It could be a very good option if you didn't have the Mordecai, I think it's fine also. But you do want the increased attack for Sentinels A2, which is a full attack. You want that increased attack to be able to do a lot of damage. Um, and I chose Rian the Conjurer over Deliana because I find this passive to be so inconsistent. And to be honest, I, the Weakened was more valuable than the AoE Revive. So definitely those are the choices. You could absolutely consider a Missionary. I think he might be a champion I'll have to level up in the future because he's showing up in lots of these awkward phases. A good turn meter drop of 50%. He's also got a single target provoke with decreased attack and a stun. Lots of crowd control, lots of turn meter control. It's very, very good. But this is how the team is constructed. I'm going to explain how I've approached each individual wave. I can't run it again because I've actually taken all of my gear off. And to be honest, I was so traumatized by it, I wouldn't want to run it again. But I'm going to show you exactly how to, what, what to target, what how to prioritize the waves, what you need to do to be successful. And then I'll show you the builds that I've got that I've been able to get off the optimizer. And then I'll just summarize it and give you any sort of pointers to what you can do to try and solve this really challenging stage, which is probably blocking you from a lot of stages you could potentially do. So if you don't know by now, you can go to the hellhades.com website and come over to the raid stages tool and every single Cursed City of Centranos stage and the recurrent restrictions, it changes per rotation. So you can see the current latest one is displayed so that you can see all of the waves, all of the stats and what you're going to be facing. So for wave one, we basically have two rays, Queen Eva, Vizix, the Unbowed and Lydia, the Death Siren. Now your number one priority here is killing the Lydia. If you don't kill the Lydia, you're gonna be facing Strengthen, that on the enemies, you're gonna be getting decreased defense weakened. You will just not survive. The Rays and the Queen Eva will one-shot you. So you cannot ever really take a decreased defense in this entire stage across all the waves. So your number one priority should be to place Spiders A3, his decreased defense, get the weaken out from Rian the Conjurer, then one-shot the Lydia the Death Siren with Sentinel and Bar of the Blood Soaked. You can quite comfortably kill her with that setup. Then you're just kind of like hoping that you don't die too much. You don't get too much freezes. The rays will be weak, but they can still freeze you. If you've got a bolster set, it can't be stripped. We'll talk about the specific gearing reasons and what gearing you should do, but she will buff strip everything else. So be mindful of that. Queen Eva is the other thing you need to be mindful of in that she does a block revive, which can be quite nasty. And I would prioritize killing the Vizix second, purely because she has that decreased speed provokes. It's, it's really annoying. The Queen Eve, you just have to watch for that big A A3 nuke. She'll probably target your Sentinel. If you get block revived, you just have to start again. So that's the goal priority here. Kill Lydia, kill Vizix, then kill them off. But now you need to be careful because Wave 2 has more to Macabre, right? More to Macabre is extremely dangerous here because not only is he obviously known for his peril, 
he's strong affinity. So you're going to struggle to kill him. And this is where you'll probably find you might spend five minutes trying to kill the first wave, get to wave two, instantly have to restart again. And this is what I had to do a lot. But the goal here is you have to kill Mortimer Carp. And really, you need to get to this wave with Spider's A3 back on a five turn cooldown. It's pretty nasty. And Rian the Conjurer's A2. I had to depend on refresh accessories because I was killing wave one too quickly, but I had to kill him to a level of degree. Otherwise, we would never get through that wave and we would die anyway. So I definitely recommend refresh accessories is a good way to go. But when you get to this wave, you have to kill more too. And then ideally Sissia, because Sissia again can do decreased defense. Now you can use some crowd control with Sentinel. He has an A1 provoke. So long as he crits, that can be quite useful. So you can kind of control the Sissia before she starts putting decreased defense out. And then you just need to tank the burns. It's all about effective HP. It's all about surviving it. You can't really increase your defense to stop this or your HP because it's a HP burn. It's going to be quite linear. The Drexars and the Tyrant shouldn't hit too much because you put decreased defense on them and the defense based damage. So they shouldn't hit too much, but you have to kill the Morto. If you weak hit the Morto and he doesn't die, you're just gonna have to restart because you will probably die straight away. But you can one shot him if you don't weak hit. It'll just be a couple of attempts. Then you come to wave three. This is a little bit easier than the other two waves, but it still carries a bit of peril. Again, you have to stop the decreased defense. So Bellinor is your number one target. He is quite squishy, only 70,000 HP, 4.8k defense. So when you put a decreased defense on him and a weaken, he will die quite com comfortably. And then I would say suggest you kind of ignore Lissandra. She doesn't do much, but she is quite annoying. But the Delianas and the Lonatharals will hurt you if you let them get going. So you really kind of need to take out the Lonatharal to stop his shielding, because that could be a, quite a problem. And then the Delianas need to be taken out bit by bit. The Lissandra is weak, a strong affinity, so you'll just kill her last. She doesn't really do any damage. She's just going to boost the turn meters of the enemies quite a lot. So if you can like stick out a provoke here or some sort of like, like control, then it's fine. But don't worry about it. The key is kill Balinor, then kill the other three and deal with Lissandra last. If you do that, you'll be successful and you will unlock Soul Cross. Now, let me show you the stats that I use. I don't have the champions built in game, as I said, but I have this team that I bit, that I ran it with because I was running the optimizer. So it is in the optimizer so we can have a look. So you can see my team here. I, I've got 75 attempts. I promise you it was a lot more than that, but this was like the last version of the builds that I did. 75 times, I only needed to beat it once and I managed to do it. Now you will notice quite straight away, there's no masteries on most of these champions. The I didn't actually build any masteries other than what I already had available on my champions here. If you are struggling, you need more damage. Masteries are probably the answer. I just didn't want to invest, invest the energy into it at the time. Now you can see I've got refresh accessories on Spider. I highly recommend it just so you can try and get that A3 on reset. So it means you don't have to worry about like managing your skill usage before you get to wave two. You absolutely have to arrive to, at wave two with this A3 available. It's a five turn cooldown. It's long, it's difficult, it's really frustrating. It's almost like too long, but there you go. It is what it is. Um, now the other thing that I wanna call out here is there isn't any stun sets. I started with stun sets, it just wasn't working and you know, between chat and, and a bunch of different people and my Discord, it was very much like, just keep going towards more bolster. Now you don't need three bolsters, you just need one. Because if you have bolster set, the rays cannot strip your shield. They can freeze you, but they cannot take your shield, which will continue to sustain your health on that wave one as you're finishing them off. So at least one bolster I would suggest is really required. And the other two pieces then can be like shield sets because they'll add together. The way that it works is any shield if there is a presence of a bolster becomes a protected shield as if all three shields are bolster and they all add together to make one big giant shield. So if you're struggling, add another shield. But you will notice that I've got two damage dealers. I've got Baroth the Blood Soaked in lethal, in full damage build, essentially he's in, he's basically the best damage I could get him uh, with the available gear that I had for HP and stuff because generally I don't have that many HP damage dealers on my account. So this is like the best I could possibly get him to. His base stats are not great either, which kind of hurts him. And then we've got Sentinel also in lethal, full damage gear. Again, base stats are pretty poor on him, which doesn't help, but you can see that we've got speed 220, 233%. I'm pretty sure either the Rathalos set doesn't count as a 5% crit rate, or that should be 100% crit rate, or maybe I just never ran it with 100% and 95 was enough for what I needed it. That's very likely as well. But what you wanna do is make sure your bolster people are, have got high HP, your damage dealers are enough to kill the, the priority target, that's the Mortu, the Lydia, and the Bellinor. Kill them in one shot before the enemy gets a turn. And then this team is just about sustain. So trying to get more HP. 
uh, trying to just stay alive as much as you can. The Sentinel does have a Provoke on the A1, which can be handy, and he has got a healing passive, which can sometimes help you out as well. Really, Mordecai is just here as a utility. The burn is actually quite powerful as a damage dealing option. Don't disregard HP burn against these enemies because you know, four of them will activate and that gives you basically, what, 12% less damage you need to deal. So that does help as well. That's why he's in this team more than anything else because of that burn and also a bit of Timmy a boost in, and he gives increased attack to Sentinel. So that is the, the build that I went with. Um, it is probably a bit of a budget scuffed build. You could probably improve it and bring the turn count down, make it a little bit less RNG, make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, but that's the allocation of roles. Three bolster sets. Don't really worry about CC. Just one shot your priority targets and then try and stay alive. So there you go, guys. Stage eight, Soul Cross. If you manage to get through it, you unlock all of this potential. And you can see I pretty much knocked this out in very few turns, 52 turns. That was pretty straightforward. The Sand Devil one is just about tanking and staying alive. It took me a while. It took me 430 turns. But even like the fastest ones, it's not it's not going very quickly. It's just just the, the state of being weak affinity with the only burner we've got here and, and a bunch of different things. So it's just about staying alive. Uh, this double boss didn't really stand much of a chance against me. All these other stages were pretty OK. Uh, that one took a little bit of time. This one here, I think, was OK. 88, not too bad. I'm lucky that I've got Alatrian Soul, so that obviously covers me for a lot here. And the same here. I'm lucky enough to have a four star Makage and all these things. So those were much, much simpler for me. This double boss was a joke. I, I knocked it out in seconds. Even with no Gigante Archer, even without her, I think it would have been fine. Uh, purely because Suzerain Katone, Mashaled, Lys uh, Lysandra, they're so good for Dark Fae. The Lysandra is really big. But you've also got someone like Casual the Rai. You could use Jetney. You could use like Nethril for Termi to control. There's lots of good options here. So this was really good. This one is proving to be a little bit more challenging. So I've still got some finite bosses to do. This is the first rotation I feel like I could potentially complete fully. Whether or not I commit to it, I don't know. This stage seven is a little bit nasty as well from um, just from a build and a control point of view. It's a bit awkward, as is S1, but that's just because I need to rebuild my champions. The other one that I mentioned at the start of the video, stage six, it's nasty without Duchess, I'll be honest. Hopefully you've got Helicath. You can probably do it with a Helicath. If you've got those, then it's just a case of burning it down with damage. But you can see a lot of my clan are struggling with it, even if they've got Duchess. I highly recommend someone like a Tarshon with a Marquess. Marquess can do a lot of damage with a Tarshon because Tarshon sets up her weaken, gives her an increased defense buff or Masamoto. Both of them can do it. They give an increased defense buff as well. And then you can basically one shot and double shot the wave. She does hit quite hard with this ability. So maybe consider getting yourself a Marquess. I don't know what the global one is here. Probably some mythical champion. Oh, look, they got using Marquess. Uh, we've got a Feral in here. We know Feral's OP. Marquess. She is the answer to your damage sources. I did try damage Kyoku. It's not very good. It's just not good at all, unfortunately. It's uh, it's It just doesn't do the numbers. But Ma the Marquess does. And obviously, if you confront it up with a Duchess, great. You should be fine. And it's just a case of watering it down. But I know a lot of people are struggling on that one. And that is also gatekeeping the content. So I'm not a fan of this gatekeeping. I hope the information I've given you today about stage eight will help you if you're still struggling in terms of how to get about it, how to approach it, how to beat it. Um, obviously, the optimizer is there for you to look for some teams based on what you have available to you. You can mirror it. But if you can get through stage eight, a lot of this stuff is a lot more... I would say more accessible. You know, these champions are, there's more legendaries available than the last rotation. There's more options available to you that you can use. Um, specifically on 21, you can use these Akimtums to great effect. So yeah, if you can get through eight, then you've got potentially a lot more rewards available to you. But there you go, guys. Let me know in the comments below. Was that helpful? Did that really help you at all? Probably not, I guess. Um, if you don't have any of the champions, there's not much I can really assist with. But let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.